you all know about me, but you'll be getting copies of my book afterwards, which I'm really excited about, and I hope you enjoy reading them. So my name is Adora Skitalk, and at the age of seven, I published my first book, Flying Fingers, Master the Tools of Learning Through the Joy of Writing. And Flying Fingers is a book of short stories and tips on writing that I really wanted to make writing approachable and engaging for youth my age. And so after I published Flying Fingers, I actually began teaching. With the debut of my first book, I went to my first local elementary school and began presenting there. And then from there, I went to elementary schools and middle schools and even high schools across the nation. But there was a problem with this, you know, flying around to different schools. Sometimes the school would request um, me to come and speak to an assembly, but I wasn't in their state or I wasn't in their city, so I couldn't come. And so when I began using video conferencing, that problem was solved. And now I can connect every day to students in places ranging from Tennessee to New York to Dubai to Costa Rica. And even uh, uh, Quebec and Canada, I've done a lot of video conferences in Alaska, so really the list of places is endless. Now I would love to hear more about you and what your experience has been in video conferencing. Um, for those of you who in the room who already have video conferencing, um, what are some of the things that you've done with it? button culture, and when I asked her what that means, she's like, well, you just press buttons. 
which I thought was kind of an interesting terminology. And so it really is. You just press buttons, and um, it's much like dialing a telephone. You, know, you just connect with the other end. And video processing is just another piece of fancy equipment that doesn't do anything. This is definitely a myth that is busted because you can see remote sites, have all these meaningful learning opportunities by connecting to all kinds of content online, and it's fairly easy to access. You know, um, Life Science, of course, offers really high quality video conferencing, and some of you in this room have access to video conferencing, as I um, kind of told you earlier. What about content for video conferencing? So, you have your video conferencing unit, and you're looking for how to connect students with all these learning opportunities. Well, you can go somewhere like the Center for Interactive Learning and Collaboration, and there you'll find hundreds of different programs on topics ranging from science, language arts, test prep, to museum visits. So you can really find um, something for everyone. To kind of demonstrate, if you go to CILC, you just open up um, CILC.org, and you can do a search, and let's see, I'll search um, art and stuff. So trying to find art content. And here you'll find providers like the Cincinnati Art Museum, the Smithsonian Art Museum, as well as programs like the Cincinnati Museum of Art Unhung Beyond the Gallery. A is for Art Museum from the Philadelphia Museum of Art. So there's all kinds of these high quality programs that um, really offer good variety. And of course, um, a plug for my own programs. If you search for the speech out there, all my writing programs which I really love doing. Now, the important thing that I find with my programs over video conferencing that I do with students is that there's a lot of interactivity involved. So I want you to skip through here, actually, to show an example of um, one of my programs, which shows how learning can really be collaborative over video conferencing. I do a lot of writing with students um, in my presentations. So, um, should be. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry, I'm still fighting off the cold. Okay, here we go. So, the great thing about video conferencing is that the content expert, so in this case, I'm, I'm the content expert speaking to students about writing, can kind of introduce this topic very easily in the same way that you as a teacher might in the classroom. But then, really go in depth, interact with students, ask questions, have students respond to questions and even do perhaps a collaborative writing activity. So this is one of my favorite things to do. I would go over the concepts of uh, conflict and obstacle, and then I would ask the students, what kind of obstacle should I write about? And then I could open up my Microsoft Word document and just start typing along with the students. Um, they might be working on something on paper, or they might be giving me suggestions as I write. So why don't we try out this activity? Imagine for a moment that you are fourth grade students. Oh, okay, so this is um, one of uh, um, an old ass uh, assignment actually that I did with um, a group of students talking about how to write a response to literature. Um, let me open up a new blank document. So over the conferencing now. This imaginary group of fourth grade students and I could create um, an example of an obstacle. So, what kind of obstacle do you think I should write about? Any suggestions? Too much homework. Too much homework. Yeah, it sounds like a very characteristic fourth grade problem. Too much homework. Great. Okay. Any other suggestions for an obstacle? We have too much homework. What's another suggestion? Not enough recess, okay. And let's get one more suggestion. The bus ride home is too long. The bus ride home is too long. Great, so now um, I could uh, pick one of these obstacles to write about in more detail. So let's look at uh, too much homework. Okay, so now. Describing this obstacle in the context of my personal narrative, which I'm speaking to students about, how would I write about this obstacle descriptively to make it seem really challenging to the reader? What are some words we could describe homework that help uh, 
make homework more evocative and really more powerful and dramatic for our readers. So what's a word to describe homework and how bad it is? Boring. Hey, as far as we, we are going to have to cut you off because we have to dive into the next time, unfortunately. Yes, no um, problem. Well, just to quickly wrap up this example, I would write this as students and then I would create a little fun paragraph to do descriptive writing. But this is uh, definitely one of the huge benefits of using video conferencing is the two-way interaction between students on one uh, uh, side and a content provider, an expert, or even other students on the other side. So I really hope that you guys enjoy breaking down the four walls of the classroom and using video conferencing to connect your students. Thank you. Thank you so much, Laura.